Hello and welcome to the kickoff video for the GitLab 12.8 release. I'm Larissa Lane. I'm the product manager for the distribution team. And today we have some of our members of the distribution team and also our counterparts from support and UX joining the call. All right, so I'm gonna go over some of the big areas of work that we're going to be focusing on for 12.8. Um, we've been talking about this in the, the past couple of kickoffs uh, that we plan to move to adding support for Postgres 11 and Postgres 12. Uh, the goal here is to make Postgres 11 the minimum required version by our next major release of GitLab, which will be 13.0. Uh, and the target date for that is in May of this year. Uh, so in the last release, we did some research into what it would take to add Postgres 11. And um, thank you to Ian for creating all of these issues that we have now scheduled for 12.8. Um, so our goal for 12.8 is to have Postgres 11 included in GitLab as an opt-in option. Uh, and the work that we need to do to get there is first of all to add Postgres 11 to GitLab. Uh, and then we have a lot of testing to do um, to test installing GitLab in various scenarios with single node and with multi-node HA uh, and also with Geo. And uh, thank you to the Geo team who have kindly agreed to take on some of the testing for Geo. Uh, we're also going to be doing a lot of testing around upgrading with Postgres 11. Uh, so then the next steps in future releases will be um, after we've been through a few releases where we have Postgres 11 as opt-in, we will transition to making it an opt-out option. And then, as I mentioned, by GitLab 13.0, it will be the minimum required version. And so then next up, we're going to continue our work on automating the installation and configuration of HA and of Geo. Uh, so we have a number of tools here that we that different teams use internally. Uh, we're continuing to work on consolidating those tools uh, so that we can all be contributing to improving the same tool that we will eventually make available to our end users as well. Uh, we don't have all of the issues created for 12.8 for this work, but that's something we'll be doing over the next couple of days. And then next up is adding optional support for Puma into the Helm charts. So um, Puma is a multi-threaded web server and we have been doing some work uh, for a while now to add support for Puma um, as another option for, in addition to Unicorn. Uh, I believe we will eventually switch over from Unicorn to Puma. And we did already add support for Puma in Omnibus. And uh, the Helm charts has lagged behind a little bit on this one. And so uh, this will contribute to our epic that we have open um, that's linked here, which is to move the maturity of our cl cloud native install from the viable maturity level to the complete. Um, and so part of that epic is to uh, have the same options available in the Helm chart that we have in Omnibus where it makes sense for a cloud native install. And then next, uh, we will be starting to research uh, the work required to renew our signing keys for the package cloud repo. And I'm actually going to hand over to GJ here to talk a little bit about what this work involves. Yeah, so for um, for a future release uh, around the time our, our keys are expiring, we'll be 
uh, uploading new keys to our package cloud repo to sign the repo. Um, but before that happens, we would like to um, be able to distribute the new key to users. Um, so in 12.8, we'll be starting uh, to look at ways of packaging up the new key and the old key and, uh, and delivering that to users and providing a way for the future to manage these keys so that uh, we won't have to worry about this um, process again going forward when we when we uh, have to renew the key again, that there'll be a, a, an automated update to trusted keys. Great, thank you so much, DJ. And then finally, in some upgrade scenarios, upgrades fail if there are background migrations still running when you attempt to do the upgrade. Um, so in 12.7, we added some documentation on how to check whether background migrations are still running before you start an upgrade. Um, this issue, we have scheduled for 12.8. It might be a little bit of a stretch, um, but the goal is to put some guardrails in place so that you can't actually upgrade unless those background migrations have completed. Uh, and so that wraps up the highlights for 12.8. I uh, just want to ask the team if they have any questions or want to provide any further commentary. Okay, I think that's a no. Uh, so thank you so much everybody for joining.